reading is such a solo sport but in places like booktube it, it really does become a team thing and it's it's lovely hi and welcome to my channel my name is sarah and i love to talk about books although today i'm talking less about books and more about booktube because today is my one year anniversary of starting my channel. I did have plans to do something creative and fun to mark this occasion, but like many things in my life, my abilities didn't quite match up to my aspirations. So instead, you just got me sitting here, but I guess that's pretty true to brand. But I did want to mark hitting the one year mark, <laughs> um, because when I started this channel last year, I had no hopes, no dreams, no expectations, and in return I've gained more than I ever could have imagined. I know <laughs> in the grand scale of things I probably have one of the slowest growing channels in the history of booktube, but part of me figures that if I'm so niche there must be a reason why some of you have stuck around and I want to thank you so much for that. I may never reach the dizzy heights of 200 subscribers but what has come to matter to me is that I have found my people so thank you for being my people and as my city is saying um, is people make Glasgow I think that's very true for booktube people make booktube. So Scott and Nell from over at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot tagged me a few months ago in the not so newbie tag and actually I think it's a really great way to wrap up my first year on booktube so I'm going to answer those questions and then I will have a little chat about what I want to do in my second year. I gather that the original creator of this tag is no longer making booktube videos but I will still link her channel down below in case you want to check out the original tag. The first question is how old is your channel and my channel is bang on one year. I uploaded my first ever video on the 21st of March 2020 and as I upload this it will be the 20th of March 2021. I actually can't <laughs> even bear to watch that first video it is so awkward I was so nervous which is strange because when you're filming you literally don't have an audience so what is there to be nervous about but I really was nervous and part of me really thinks that I should maybe just delete some of those earlier videos but then another part of me thinks no it's, it's good to see how a channel's evolved and hopefully that will reassure anyone who is considering starting their own channel that we all start from pretty much nothing. I didn't start this channel as um, a booktube channel or at least not solely a booktube channel. I had thought that I would have different content types and um, I thought I was going to chart my divorce journey, my recovery from that divorce and the, you know, the breakdown of the marriage. I thought um, there would be stuff on here about me getting fit and losing weight. And um, I quickly hit a couple of big problems with that plan. Firstly, divorce is mainly ugly crying, and in my case, ugly anger as well. And I didn't really want to share that on YouTube, and it probably would have come back to bite me if I had. So I never really got off the starting blocks with that. And then my other problem is to chart your journey to fitness, to health, to happiness, you actually have to make progress. So my stagnation in pretty much all of those areas wouldn't have been very interesting or inspiring to watch. So I was left with the bookish content. Actually, I'm so glad that that's how it turned out. I absolutely love talking about books, watching other people talk about books and it's really brought a joy into my life that I can really make a big thing of this hobby that I've always had. Sometimes I do think about, you know, it would be nice to maybe shake it up a bit and put other content up but I figure that anyone who subscribes to this channel you're here because you want to hear me talk about books so it never really feels right to kind of then shove in some other stuff that's totally unrelated but I'll, I'll get to that when I'm talking about what my plans are for the channel in the coming year. Question number two is what are your favourite types of videos to make? 
and although I don't do these very often it's kind of the downfall of only posting once a week is that I don't always have a lot of space in my schedule as if I have one um, to to do a lot of these sorts of videos but I really do love a tag video I think they often give you the opportunity to talk about books that you maybe haven't mentioned before books that you read before booktube and I think if they are well done they can really make you think. I find myself considering books and themes and how I read in different ways when I'm answering tag questions. I also quite like um, doing vlogs but they are a bit of a bitch to edit um, so I tend to just keep them to like when I'm doing the 24 hour readathon for Dewey's or um, like my visit to Hay on Wye, um, a town in Wales which has like a bazillion <laughs> different bookshops in it. Um, I'll try and capture something like that. So I'm hoping once lockdown has lifted again here and things start to open up, I'll maybe do um, a vlog of me going around the charity shops, something like that. Because I do enjoy, it's just, it's a bit more creative, it's a bit more fun to do and it probably gives you something a bit different to watch as well. But yeah, they they are a pain in the butt to edit. Um, editing takes me quite long anyway, but it's not helped by the fact that I have a geriatric laptop, which I, I can't afford to replace. It crashes, it freezes, it gives me like the, it used to be an egg timer. What do we call that now? Like the circle of doom um, with basically every command that I give it. So I have to spread out the editing for all of my videos over a number of different evenings just to find the time and also <laughs> to try and stop myself from chucking the damn laptop outside out the window um, in sheer frustration. So like a 30 minute finished video will take me about 40 to 50 minutes to film and then another three to four hours to edit. <laughs> Booktube is a true labour of love. I figure um, if I can get my laptop to speed up, um, I, I need to majorly declutter it, probably format it, all that sort of stuff, and I could maybe get my editing time down to like two to three hours. But, but actually <laughs> doing that to my laptop also takes time, which I don't have. <laughs> Question number three is what one piece of advice would you give someone who is considering starting a Booktube channel? And when I was thinking of my answer to this question, I didn't realise it said one piece of information or, or advice. So you're about to get an unsolicited advice tsunami coming your way. But I think mainly if I do wrap it down to one, it's just don't think, just do. Just sit down and start filming yourself. Although do keep in mind that A, you will not be a natural at first and that is absolutely fine and B, you will not make it big um, straight off the bat. No one does. But also put it this way, what have you got to lose? Definitely far less than you can gain by having your own booktube channel and, and this, this is coming from someone who really hasn't got off those starting blocks in my first year. I have gained so much from having this channel the joy this hobby gives me, the added element it's given to my reading, the amazing people I have met, that's more than worth um, the hours I sit watching Filmora crash my edits. But some practical advice. So number one, you do not need fancy equipment. I'm phoning, phoning. I'm filming this on my phone. Um, I do have some lights set up um, which I, I think it's blatantly obvious I don't really know what I'm doing with them because I've still never, you can see my hand there, I've still never quite got the positioning right to try and get rid of the shadows behind me when I film in this location. Um, I did, the most expensive thing I ever bought was um, a microphone, which I've never used because I think I bought the wrong type and I just don't know how to work it. But yeah, literally my lights are super cheap. They are from Amazon and um, I have a tripod that I already had for my proper camera. I do have, um, God it's been that long since I've used it, I can't even remember what it is, I think it's a Nikon, I have a Nikon um, camera and I never use that for filming because it's got some stupid cut off that it only films in 10 minute blocks and I just lost the rag with that so yeah you can absolutely 
film on your phone. You don't even really need a tripod if you can prop your camera, your phone up properly. I've got a little um, sort of like ring on the back of my phone that can work as a prop stand so you don't even need a tripod. I think as long as your picture is clear enough and people can hear you, you do not need all the fancy pants shenanigans. For number two, I will say it's worth um, getting a decent bit of video editing software. I've always used a bought program but I know like there's probably free things that you can use as well. I use um, Filmora by is it Wondershare, um, I'll, I'll link it below. I pay for a yearly subscription for it, it's not expensive and it does everything I need it to do and I would encourage people to at least do a little bit of editing in your videos you can cut out bits where you waffle, you can cut out vocal tics, like I am a big um -er, and I will sit looking off into space quite blankly while I try and remember how words work. I don't think anyone needs to see that so I will cut that out. And also it does help to do things like little text overlays or if you want to use music in blogs and things like that. It does just help your videos look that little bit more polished. Number three is just get comfortable sit comfortably and talk to the camera as if you're just talking to your friend. It took me a while to get into that. I thought I had to be presenting um, but I think the more I've relaxed into it the better my videos have got and certainly I've seen that in um, the responses I've got in comments and things like that as well. Number four is just be yourself. Don't put on an act don't read things that you wouldn't normally read, just be your authentic self. That is always what draws me to a booktuber, is if I can see that they are genuine, that they genuinely enjoy the books that they read, and we are seeing the true person. It's really easy to spot when someone is putting on an act, and it's just not nice to watch. And number five is a bit of advice I'm giving not only to a someone who wants to start a channel but also to myself and that is try not to worry about the numbers and if you figure out how to do that please do let me know. I remember um, how excited and overjoyed I was with my first few subscribers and actually I think I was more excited about them than I was for even hitting my 100 because I honestly didn't think that anyone would watch this channel and every sub means a lot to me because you are taking a chance on me this obviously is something I've done that has caught your eye and when you're watching my videos you are spending your time on me so I think that is a real honour when someone has chosen to follow you and hopefully <laughs> watch um, your videos when they go up however I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit deflated by how slow my growth has been compared to others that I follow that started at roughly the same time as me. I'm really proud of what I've done on this channel and I know logically part of my slow growth is because I don't put myself about enough and I'll get into that um, in a little while but I am a deeply insecure person so I do take it personally. And I know that, you know, comparison is the thief of joy and blah, 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 blah. So do not be like me. Get your head away from the numbers and just do what you enjoy. Question number four is, since joining, have you run into any unforeseen challenges? And like, like I've just kind of touched on, it's the putting myself out there, both in terms of how frequently I post and um, in engaging in the booktube community. Probably it sounds a bit like crap and even people who know me or work with me probably wouldn't believe me when I say this but I am painfully shy. I am really insecure and I have a major imposter complex in pretty much everything that I do. Social anxiety is a huge hurdle that I have yet to jump cleanly over and um, since joining booktube and that shouldn't have been an unforeseen challenge because it's something that I have in everything that I do but I don't know, some part of me had thought that I would be different when <laughs> it came to booktube. I've made some amazing friends in this first year on booktube but I can't expect to build on those or elevate those and I really really want to unless I overcome this hurdle. This is the booktube community emphasis on that last word and I can't 
expect to be part of that or to grow my channel until I can get over that particular problem. Question number five, which is what is a favourite book or series you've read because of booktube? So by this I'm, I'm guessing it doesn't mean like just books you've read while you've been on booktube, but books you've picked up specifically because of booktube. I think if I answer this question next year, um, there'll be a lot more to pick from because really in my first year of booktube I was still reading the books that I picked for myself before I joined booktube but there have been some definite ones that were they they only came onto my radar because of booktube and I only read them because of booktube so the first one it has to be the death of Vivek Oji I loved this and um, I had already bought an Aquiki oh there it is there this one had been on my Goodreads TBR for a long time and I bought that um, kind of April, May, but I haven't read Freshwater yet. So this was the first um, amazing book that I read and it was picked by Scott and Nell. And this is a phenomenal story of, not surprisingly, the death of Vivek Oji, but also his life and how he is trying to build his sense of gender identity, sexual identity, and try and express those in quite a homophobic society. I thought this book was fabulous. Another one that I read last year that I don't think I would have picked up without booktube is a graphic novel of which I think this is only the second one I've ever read and um, I absolutely love this. This is Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi and this is, um, yeah, like I said, it's a graphic autobiography um, of her experience of growing up in Iran and um, then also emigrating from Iran and that um, difference of culture and viewing things that were happening in her country from outside of it. This book has totally turned my head um, on graphic novels. I haven't read any since and I haven't bought any yet, but I'm definitely far more open to reading that um, genre. And again, I wouldn't have picked that up if I hadn't heard so many people loving on it on booktube. The next few I want to talk about were ones that I read as ebooks. The first one was Summer Water by Sarah Moss which was one of my favourite books last year. It's a very short book about one day in the lives of people who are staying on a holiday lodge um, park in Scotland. The weather's rubbish. We see the day from everyone else's perspectives and they're all kind of stuck in their lodges and they're watching other people and there's a building sense of tension interspersed with these really lovely um, vignettes about the nature that's around them. But this tension is building and building and the ending actually left me pretty winded and I just thought it was phenomenal. I also finally picked up Normal People by Sally Rooney due to booktube. I absolutely loved that as well. And then uh, a non-fiction that I picked up due to booktube was The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. Rubenfold? It'll be on the, it'll be on the screen, um, which is the life stories of the five women who were killed by Jack the Ripper. And I don't know if I would necessarily have wanted, like, been that interested in reading about anything to do with Jack the Ripper um, now, although I had been quite interested when I was younger. But the really feminist slant on this and how fresh it was in that it doesn't really talk about Jack the Ripper at all. This is all about the victims. And I think in this time and place that the world is in, that is so healthy and it really honours those women as well. And yeah, definitely that was a pick because of booktube. And I'm just looking at the books that I've got here. And so many of these are booktube purchases. I haven't read these. This is my TBR trolley, but we have Girl, Woman, Other. Um, we have um, I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. There's Three Women by Lucy Tadeo. There's The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. There's another Sarah Moss, Night Waking. There's Patsy by um, Nicole Dennis Ben. Like there are so many books that I have bought in the last year and add also other ones that I've added to my TBR that I haven't yet picked up copies of and it's all due to booktube. And I think my reading is just growing and getting better because I have your voices recommending books to me, which is just, well, actually, <laughs> again, that brings me on to the next question, which is number six. 
overall what is your favourite aspect about booktube and it is that it is the talking about books in terms of making my videos it's that process of formulating my thoughts about the books that I've read and then seeing how you guys respond to it when you leave comments but then it's also watching other booktubers talk about books and then having that conversation in their comments as well and I just I just think that's so magical. Reading is such a solo sport, but in places like booktube, it, it really does become a team thing and it's, it's lovely. And I am a booktube watcher first and foremost, and I'm always blown away. Like booktubers are so intelligent. They're so creative, they're funny. And really, I think that the book community is the best of humanity because when we talk about books, we aren't just talking about books, we're talking about life and society and relationships and I have come across very very few booktubers who have hate at the core of their opinions on any of these things. I think on the whole we are a really open, welcoming, loving and open-minded group of people and I think, I honestly think that that is books that do that to a person. Books open your mind, it's really hard to remain homophobic or racist or misogynistic if you read the right sorts of books. I know there are those out there who desperately try but it's because they aren't reading the right sorts of books but I think on the whole when you learn about people, you learn about humanity, you learn about society, you cannot help but have your mind opened and I, I see that reflected time and time and time again in the booktubers that I follow. Number seven is want to spread the booktube love? give at least one newbie a shout out. So I went through my subscriptions list and I actually don't have anyone, well I wasn't looking at when they started their channel, I was looking specifically for people whose channels had less subscribers than me and yeah I don't really have anyone, literally am, the smallest, apart from, and this blew my brains out because I cannot understand this, but booktube with Simon and Amy have like 10 less subscribers than me. What is going on people? They are a far better channel than me, they're funny, they are super creative and I cannot understand why more people haven't subscribed to Simon and Amy's channel. They are newer than me so I assume it's probably just that but if you haven't checked them out you absolutely have to now. They are fellow Scottish booktubers so of course I am waving that flag but they could be from Mars and I would still absolutely love their channel so you definitely need to go and check out them. I've also recently started following Sam over at Paper Not Books. She had taken a bit of a break I think but now she is back and I met her through the Red Under the Bed book club chat and she is lovely so please go and boost her subscriber count as well. And question number eight is just to tag some other booktubers. So I am using this more of a shout out than a tag. I mean obviously if you want to do it and I tag you then please do go ahead because I would love to know what your answers to these questions are and also if I don't tag you and you like the sound of this tag just go ahead and let me know that you've done it because I would really like to see your videos. But yeah I'm using this more as a opportunity to shout out the people who I consider friends, the ones who have supported me on my booktube journey and have probably driven um, some of you subscribers my way due to tagging me in things and giving me shout outs so I would like to repay the love. The first is obviously Scott and Nell at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. They tagged me in this and they are really just the most fabulous People. They've been really supportive of me and I really love watching their channel just grow and grow because they are so funny, they are super intelligent, I love the way that they examine their reading and the themes and the things that they read and they, you know, they dare to say things that other people wouldn't and they dare to push discussions into places that some people are clearly uncomfortable with but which are really, really important and they do it all with the sort of snark that I bloody love. So yes, Scott and Nell at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, thank you for being a friend. <laughs> and then, I can't believe I just said that. And then of course I have to mention Danny over at Spinelli Speaks. She was 
probably one of the first booktube friends I made and she was so supportive right from the very beginning. She has helped build up my confidence, build up my channel um, because she really was so encouraging and would tag me and shout me out a lot when I was in my really early days. I've met a lot of my other booktube friends and other channels that I subscribe to through Danny. She is a powerhouse. She is so effervescent and so fun to watch. She talks about a really wide range of books. She's super funny and she is just so full of energy and she is definitely a channel that you need to follow. She is perfection. And speaking of which, I have to shout out Ange with an E. She <laughs> is also perfection in my eyes. I think much like Scott and Nell, she's got a really sharp wit, but you have to pay attention with Ange because she's so sneaky with it. But again, she reads great books. She's been super friendly, super supportive of me. I really enjoy her videos and you should definitely check out um, Shubgate, the feud she had with Simon from Booktube with Simon and Amy over Shuggy Bane, which was probably one of the highlights of my first Booktube year. And then I just want to end with some shout outs for some newer booktuber um, friendships that I've started to make. They're really phenomenal booktubers but they're also the loveliest of people. I have to mention Emily at Novel Novels. We're just still getting to know each other but she is such a warm and kind and lovely person and she again reads a really wide range of books and she is a voracious reader. She has some really interesting videos on different themes like her favourite female characters and things like that but also she is the epitome of someone who chats to the camera like she's talking to a friend and it really does make you feel like you're sitting having a coffee with her, it's lovely. And then huge shout out to Barb at the font. Barb is so clever. Her videos are always really thought out, her opinions are really good and she is wickedly funny. I absolutely adore her. She's done some really interesting videos, particularly on like mental health in booktube, that was a standout for me. And she's just a really lovely woman to chat to in the comments as well. She does have one of the smaller channels and I cannot understand that either. Um, she really does deserve far more subscribers than she has. So go and get cooking. And then finally, so that's all the questions from the Not So Newbie tag. And I just thought I would end this video I mean, none of this is definite, I'm just musing over things at the moment, but what I would hope to do with my channel in the coming year, I definitely want to build it up more. So that means working on coming out of my shell, making those connections with other booktubers and really trying to return the friendship and the warmth that I've received. I also would like to start posting twice a week I'm tentative with this one because I literally have no idea how I will fit this in. But I've seen and I really, really enjoy watching people's kind of weekly check-in videos, their Friday reads, whatever they've termed it as. But I was thinking of doing a kind of midweek check-in where I talk about a book of maybe that I've just finished or what I'm currently reading, but also just letting a bit more of life into my channel. So just talking about things that aren't books maybe I will talk about what I've been watching on telly or add in a little vlog of somewhere that I've maybe been for a walk and things like that just to add a little bit more flavour to the content that I'm putting out there and then if I maybe use that to do TBRs and things that will free up a bit more time for me to do other content more tags and other bookish chat as well because I do feel like my channel is becoming a bit formulaic I do a TBR I wrap up the last month I'll maybe do a tag and I'll maybe do a video with some sort of other content and then it's back around to the TBR and wrap up and it yeah I just want to shake things up a little bit I think so it would be really great to hear what sort of content you want to see because I'm not making this channel for myself <laughs> I'm making it for you guys so what do you want to hear me talk about what sort of content do you really enjoy is there anything that you don't like 
about my channel. I'm fully open to criticism as long as you're not an arsehole about it. And yeah, just tell me what you as a viewer are looking for. And within my limited skill set and time, I will try and bring those things into my videos as well. So to finish on, I just want to say thank you to anyone who's ever hit that subscribe button. If you've ever taken the time to watch my videos, if you've hit subscribe, I cannot thank you enough. I really had the best first year on booktube and i am excited to see where the next one takes me but i think i've been quite indulgent in this video today it's all about me but then that's what birthdays should be but i think there is a limit to that sort of behavior so i'm gonna wrap it up here and so until next time bye number seven is do you want to spread do you Number seven is, do you want to...